Hello everyone, Mike Barber here. Remember this program is tape delayed for many reasons, but you will see it still alive and well. Men, women worshiping, men, women listening to the life changing word of God. It'll touch your heart in many ways. The Mike Barber Ministries, this is our church. This is where we live. Enjoy it because you will be blessed. Father, you are so good. I don't know why, but I've had this in my heart. You see, to be saved, it's easy. The gates of heaven are wide open. You say yes to Jesus, and he is so, so, so good. That heaven is available to all of us. But you see, the reason why you read about all these guys, Peter, Paul, James, all these guys that just strive to live a good, good life. And let me tell you why. Because here, it's hard, you know. It's hard to live life. It's hard with everything that we go through. I'm not a perfect person. But God intended for us to live a good life. Not so that we can experience heaven when we die. But he wants us to live a good life so that we can experience heaven here on earth. You see, Pastor B... And Pastor Mike, they say this all the time. You might be in prison, but prison doesn't have to be in you. You see, if you lift your hands right now, you're decreasing the distance between heaven and you. So every time that you are lifting up your hands, you're decreasing the distance between heaven and you. You see, worship is what brings heaven to earth. So when we sing these songs, we allow heaven to take over this place. It doesn't matter where we are. We can be in a prison, we can be in a church, we can be in wherever place, but we are bringing heaven here. And I said this yesterday, worship brings the atmosphere for victory. So today, when we sing this one more time, I'm encouraging you. Sing this out so that there can be a breakthrough in your situation, so that there can be a breakthrough in your family, so there can be a breakthrough for that miracle that you're believing for. Man, I'm fired up because, man, you you guys might look at me and be like, man, that guy's crazy the way that he worships, the way that he jumps around or anything. But if you know what God brought me through, if you know where I came from, if you know my story, you would understand. So today, I'm encouraging you, sing as loud as you can. Worship with everything that you got. Because look, look at your story. It brought you here to this moment where you can experience Jesus. And this can change your reality forever, your family's reality, your legacy. Man, it broke my heart to to know that Jesus did absolutely everything to bring me close to him, to give me an opportunity. But that opportunity isn't just for me, but it's for you as well. So let's sing it out with everything we got. I'm caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. Because Jesus, you don't owe me. Cause more than anything that you can do, we just want you. We just want you. 
we just want you, Jesus. Yes, we do. We, we just want you. Have your way, Jesus. We just want you. But you don't know me anything. We just want you. We just want you. Have your way. We just want you. We just want you. On you. Amen. 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 Give the Jesus in this awesome worship team a great big thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Didn't you enjoy the testimonies from those young ladies, huh? They were awesome. You know, before I get going, uh, Shaheen, c come up here, grab a microphone, and bring Granny with you. I mean, Fran. Come on up here, Fran. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Have your hand there, Fran. <laughs> Y'all know Fran? What, 26 straight years in prison, never to get out but God. And uh, she's my sister, my wife, a sister in the Lord. And I don't know what I did wrong to be in, to inherit her, but <laughs> help me, Jesus. You know, some people are a thorn in the, in the side, and the other people are the whole bush. You know what I'm talking about, huh? But anyhow, this is my sister and friend. Take a few minutes and just share, babe, whatever you want to share as well. I was so happy when I got here. <laughs> then I looked around, I saw all my friends that should be home. You got to talk up, friend. I'm looking around at my friends that should be home too. And that made me sad. Sorry. But I know your day's coming. Today is one less day. I asked God when I first got to prison, after Mike led me to the Lord. Lord, before that, I was a dark raining maniac. Maniac. <laughs> but anyway, I asked the Lord to let me see inside everybody's heart that I approached in prison because everybody had a sad face, you know. And that way, I would know who needs some love. And I, that's all I have to give anymore is love and nothing else. Yeah. So I want to say something real quick. The power of prayer. The power of prayer. I don't know if y'all understand that. But one time in the 80s, I took a little girl in to see Mike on the weekend and let him pray over her. She was gnarled like this with arthritis. She'd been sexually abused all her life by her grandpa and her daddy. And she didn't want to live anymore, but, you know, how things happen, and she ended up in prison. And she couldn't even carry her tray from the rack to the table. Well, anyway, she didn't want to go hear about God, just like I didn't before it happened to me. But she went. Mike prayed over her, put his hands on her hands, and he prayed over her. She went back to the dorm, same way. Next morning, I got up and I went to work. And when I came in that evening, Kayla said, look at my hands, friend, and they were beginning to come down. <laughs> One week later, she was writing with a pen. Amen. So I just want all y'all to know 
to keep praying. Just keep asking God to fulfill your prayers because he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Look, I'm out. Anybody else can be out. If I'm out. <laughs> Amen. Give her a big hand, everybody. You know, one thing Mike does talk to you all about is attitude. And like Fran said, don't don't ever give up. Um, he had someone he was mentoring in one of the units and told them to repeat any day now. Because your mindset and how you look at things really, really does matter. So keep that in mind. Because Jesus loves you and he hasn't given up on any of us. Amen. Help, help Granny there. Help hey, one there. Bless God, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I have fun with that girl, I'm telling you. I had no worship been absolutely awesome. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to go about 25, 25, 30 minutes, and there's been plenty said already, and uh, I was going to do more, but I don't need to, and, and uh, I'm not up here to hear myself. Everybody say this, Lord. Lord. Say with an attitude. Lord. Make me, Make me. An, answer. an answer. Say it again, Lord. Lord. Make me, Make me. An answer. Amen. Amen. What that means is that you live a lifestyle that represents him, not the things of the world. Amen. I would venture to say, I've got my hand up first, that the majority of us that once somebody shared Jesus Christ, meaning that you got to ask Jesus Christ into your heart, confess him with your mouth. Believe with your heart, you shall be saved. The gift of salvation is the only gift that will get you to heaven. No other gift will get you to heaven but the gift of salvation. But yet at the same time, I would say there's very few of us in here that had the privilege of somebody just sitting down and telling you what all that means. Telling you what does it take to truly walk out that lifestyle, to be able when that moment comes when you sit down with somebody and they're broken and they're hurting, that you immediately know how to share with them this wonderful gift that you have on the inside of you. Amen? And I know that when I ask Christ into my heart, I didn't have that person to sit down and tell me, okay, this is what you do first. This is what you do second. This is what you do third. Because, see, basically this message here real quick on spiritual growth, uh, a lasting foundation. Lord, make me an answer. Make me an answer. That, in other words, my feet will always speak louder than what I say verbally. Words are wonderful. But more than that is somebody who walks it. And you can look at them because the Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. Okay? And just by their countenance upon them, you know deep inside they know the answer. They, they have it together. Not, not saying that we're better than you or I'm better. That's not what I'm talking about. But to know that that I am the answer. Second Peter says this. Everybody say this. Second Peter, Second Peter. Chapter, three, chapter 3, verse 18. Verse 18. Say it again. Second Peter, Second Peter. Chapter, three, chapter 3, verse 18. Verse 18. Now when you get back in your living area, that is your assignment tonight. You get your Bible. 
And you go way back toward the back of the New Testament. The second Peter. Third chapter. And you read what it says. It says this. We must. We must grow. What's we must mean? We don't have a choice. Amen. We must grow in the grace and the knowledge of the world. No. Not hardly. It says we must grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this message is threefold. It's for that person that's radically saved. There's no turning back. These three young ladies that just stood up here and gave a testimony. Friend, so doubt. But much more important than that is when given the opportunity, you have the confidence to share with that person how they too can be set free. It was said while ago, you may be in prison, but prison doesn't have to be in you. Amen? And so this message is for those that you're radically saved. Anybody that knows you, you know you're radically saved. You know, it's more than playing an instrument. It's more than having a beautiful voice. It's a walk. It's more than being president and founder of a pretty decent-sized prison ministry. It's more important than that. What's more important is that I know 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 that my name, Mike Barber, is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what I know. It's not me standing on this pulpit. It's not all this equipment. No, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what's important. And the second foe to this ministry are those who kind of waver. You come to church sometimes, the least little thing creates a roadblock and you don't come. You need to know what I'm about to share. And then the last fold is the ones that just, you need Jesus. Plain and simple. Amen? But the foundation to everything I just said is 2 Peter. Amen? Okay? And again, it says, we must, that means you and me, all of us, we must grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Time out. How you growing? Are you growing? Are you growing more toward the world or to the cross? We have seven grandkids, grand champions. My prayer for each of those, when they graduate from high school, number one, I hope I'm still around. <laughs> But my goal is when they graduate from high school, they know more about Jesus than they do the world. And a lot of that has to do with what you listen to. Because what you listen to gets inside of you, and that's what comes out of you. And that's what this scripture here is all about. We must grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His highest priority in our lives determine the impact of our lives. His highest priority for our lives determine the impact of our lives. Genesis, the foundation of this message is Genesis 1.26. We know it. Let us make man, human being, in our image. Who is our? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When you see our, that's why three in one. Father, Son, and Ho let us make humans in our image. What image do you portray? What he did, what he did, what he be like. I don't know what he be like. You know what I'm trying to say? Give me some, give me some, give me some. Give me what? <laughs> Women, you walk around here with your pants so low I can see the top of your socks. What he did? I, 
I just don't think, I don't think that fits in this scripture. I don't think Jesus looks anything like that. I don't think. Pretty sure of it, matter of fact. So in order for us to grow in grace and knowledge, we must understand we were made in his image. It's not about me. It's about him. It's not about Mike Barber Ministries. It's not about once being a 10-year NFL player. It's not about that. It's not about recognition. I could do a lot of things that would create a lot more recognition for me personally and for this ministry, but I'm not in it for that. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Standing in front of a bunch of ladies who I consider my sister, doing the very best that I can, I don't have to speak on this platform. If I never get on this platform again, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. All I want to do to the best of my ability, and I don't, always, uh, I don't always come through, but to be in his image. I don't know about you, but I'm still under construction. But I'll never be what I used to be. And I'm not trying to be funny, but if you get in my face, you better be pretty good. I'm 66 years of age, not far from being 67, but I'm telling you what, you want to jump on me, you better be pretty good. The old man just might fake you out. And the reason I say that is corporate America has this image of a wimpy Jesus. And that's the last thing that he is. And the day that I've given my life to Jesus Christ, he's protected me. I've come close a few times with my temper. I'm the first to admit that. But more and more and more, I am convinced and I'm determined to be in the image of him the best of my ability. So to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, I have to understand I was created to live a life in his image. Isaiah 64, 4 says this, Lord, you are our father. Everybody say, Lord, you're my father. Lord, we are the clay and you are the potter. We are formed by your hand. Let me ask you real quick, whose hand's on your life? Oh, nice answer. See, these officers, they know you. You come in here and hallelujah. But you see, they know you when you're back there. You see, you compliment this place or you contaminate it. Whose hands are on you? Well, that's a nice answer. And I know that there's many of you that, is, that are. And it's a fair question because you got to understand to grow in grace and knowledge. You got to understand whose image you were created to be in. You were made by the hands of your father. Who are you letting mold? See, Jesus is selfish. Can't be four hands. It can only be two hands. Yeah. Yeah. Psalms 103. Acknowledge. Acknowledge, it means heads up, pay attention. Acknowledge the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. This is his place. We are to honor him. I honor your head warden. I honor these officers. I will be on time. Getting here. I will be on time leaving here. I will not make excuses. That's my way of honoring them. I honor the policy of TDCJ. That is a part of what this scripture is saying. Acknowledge the Lord. He is God. He made us. We are the sheep of his pasture. 
Proverbs 10, 25 says this, when the storms of life comes, when the storms of life come, and they do come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly has an everlasting foundation. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> that is our victory. Because of my time, i got to fast forward here. Now, there are three steps that every one of us should know. When that moment comes that you can sit down and share with somebody, you can be confident as you share it. Amen? Amen. The first step that we all must know and to live this victorious life, the first step, we all responsible for renewing our mind. That's the first step of becoming an answer. Make me an answer. I have to renew my mind. You and I must renew our minds. New, New Living Translation, Romans 12, 2 says this. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Enough said. Which hands are marble in? For you Aggies, I'll say it again. Which hands are marble in? For you Cowboy fans, I'll say, which hand is the marble in? <laughs> now listen to me, ladies. The Bible says you've been put before you life and death. Choose life for you and your descendants. How many mothers are in the house? Put your hands up. Put your hands down. Stupid question I'm fixing to ask. How many of you, it is just fine, it's okay, you might even encourage it that your kids go to prison? You couldn't have answered that any quicker. No. That's exactly right. That's the last thing you want. So you should be in here doing everything that you can. To renew your mind so that it will filter until your children. So that when you have that privilege of visitation and you visit with them, your conversation can be positive. You can look at that son. You can look at that daughter. And you can tell them, better me in here than you. But now let's talk and let's get this straight so that it doesn't happen to you. You understand what I'm saying? Don't copy the behavior and the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. What you thinking, ladies? What's up? What do you need? How you thinking? How you thinking, Mike Barber? What are you thinking when nobody's around, nobody's looking? All these hotels that I stay in all the time, many times by myself. What are you thinking, Mike, when nobody's looking? Who are you representing, Mike? Okay, you're on a platform right now. The camera's on. We've got a lot of people, so it's easy to try to shine now. But you see, character is what you do in the dark. That's the real person. So our first step is in Romans 12, 2. Change your thinking. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is God and pleasing and perfect. Knowing the will of God, I don't know if you can put words behind that. <laughs> Renewing your mind, the way I was brought up. I didn't have the privilege of living at home my junior and senior year. Got a scar here. I got a scar here from my dad hitting me with a broomstick, one with a hammer. I didn't have a dad that called, say, son, I love you, never called me son. That's why to all my kids, every chance I get, I tell them I love them. <laughs> Even times when I'm mad at them. And parents do get mad at their kids. That doesn't stop me from telling them I love you. And that I care for you. Amen. Amen. 
Then you will know God's will for your life. There's nothing more important. And I'm here to tell you, ladies, God's will is not for you to be in here. Let me prove that real quick. Golly, can you put some more time on that clock? <laughs> I'm going to prove to you how much Jesus loves you. It wasn't God's game plan for you to come to prison. Stop blaming God for you being in here. God had nothing to do with you coming to prison. He did not. These people say, well, the Lord wanted me to go. No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But what he did do is he loved you enough because guess who else didn't want you to come to prison? The devil. He didn't want you to come to prison. Why? Because he knew ministries would come in here. Wonderful chaplains and volunteer chaplains like Travis bringing in different people in here to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Mike Bover Ministries coming in here and setting up chairs and doing all this kind of crazy stuff. The devil knew it. No, he didn't want you to come to prison. He wanted to kill you while you were still on the outside. When you were too busy to go to church. He had every excuse in the world, but you see, God stepped up and he said, no, I didn't want my daughter to go. But devil, you're not going to kill my daughter. And if it takes them coming to prison to give their life to their creator, then so be it. You see, ladies, that's how much God loved you. He didn't allow the devil to kill you. And how many of you in here, since you've been in here, your life has radically changed for the glory of God? Let me see your hand. Now give God some praise. Amen. You can't tell me he doesn't love you. The second step is renewing. After renewing your mind, the second, the second step is we have to admit. James says this, 5.16. Confess your trespasses or your sins. We have to confess it. We have to admit it. I've had a number of people on death row that I've had the privilege of really ministering to. And I literally had one here a while back after ministering to him. I made it very clear. If you don't come clean, you're not going to get clean. Spent a lot of years on death row. Then all of a sudden, out of his mouth, he admitted he had done it. That day, that guy today, he's so free, he's still on death row. But he's so free, the love of God in him. Ladies, we got to admit, we got to renew our mind. We have to admit, we have to confess, amen. And then the last thing here. Oh, I'm going so fast through this. But that's the way it is. The third step is we've got to repent. Amen. We have to repent. After confession, we should repent. This is more than acknowledging wrongdoing or promises to try harder. True repentance means that we commit to make an about face, a 180. Amen. Amen. Acts 26, 20, Paul taught the new converts that they must repent of your sins and turn to God and prove they have changed by the good things they do. True repentance means change. And so as I close this up tonight, for me to become an answer, help me become an answer. I got to understand the meaning. Of a renewed mind. Looks like me. There's not a brain transplant. Same brain. But. A different mentality. I am renewing my mind. Amen. And the greatest way. One of the greatest ways. Or some of the greatest ways to renew your mind. Thank you. Just do it. Just like I taught you. <laughs> the Great way to renew your mind. Listen to me, ladies. You must be faithful in church. 
Don't tell me, oh, I ain't got time for church. You know, I do my own church. No, you don't. I just say it. I don't know how a person can grow if you don't take the time to go to church. At the end of this weekend, my wife and I will be exhausted. We'll drive all the way back to Houston, but Sunday morning we will be in church. Not for me to speak. It's my time to sit and listen and take the word with an expectancy that whoever is speaking, they will say something that will enhance me even more in my walk with God. Amen. You got a great chaplain here. You got great volunteers here. You don't have an excuse. Getting into the Word of God. My wife and I, we read the New Testament every single month. From Matthew to Revelations, every single month. We have the total pages in our New Testament. We divided it by 30 or 31, whatever we did. And I think in my Bible, it's like eight pages a day. In her Bible, that she, I think it's ten pages a day. But whatever the day of the month that it is, that's what we do. That way we're on the same page. It creates great conversation. And we're growing in the Lord. And that's what makes the difference. Amen? And so, you put all this together. I'm going to renew my mind. I'm going to get around my right fellowship. That means i got to separate from the old. And it's a fight. It's a fight. I remember playing Pittsburgh Steelers. It's fourth and one. We score, we win the game. We advance in the playoffs. I'm in the huddle. Half of me wants the quarterback to call my play. Because if I score, front page. <laughs> but there's another half of you, don't, no, no, let somebody else do it. That way if we fail, they won't be pointing the finger at me. And sure enough, I write fake 22, why the layout? I'm the why, hit the linebacker, boom. I had four all pros on top of me. Jack Ham, Lambert, Greenwood, and Shell, the strong safety. All of them are all pros. Great football players. Come off as hard as I could, Jack Ham, he would hold me, which is cheating. And, and, you know, now, now get me now. We're closing up here. You think I could say, uh, Jack, please let go of me. I, I need to go over there, and you just stay right here. No. No. The game of life is a fight. And you got to know your opponent. And the devil will never give you a good enough day to give you a day off. He's going to hit you and 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 hit you. But you see, I am renewing my mind. I admit I need help. And I repent of all the pathetic stuff that I've done. And you can know that not only Jesus forgives, which is amazing, but for me, greater than that is he forgets as though it never happened. Don't you wish TDC would forget? But this game, it's worth the fight. When he hits you, he keeps hitting you. God be the glory. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Jesus Christ. And Ephesians says, when you've done everything to stand, stand. If you had any idea the fight that I have been through in my life the last five years. Went through a horrible divorce, just don't make sense. Wiped me out. Just did not make sense. My wife today went through the same thing. Thought my life was over. So embarrassed. To God be the glory, I had a few people in my life grabbed a hold of me. No, 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 no. 
and said, big boy, you, you keep standing. You got to understand the devil hates you with everything in him. To see my kids weep and hurt. Her kids, she has two sons that are doctors. But I'm telling you, how God knocked it out of the park, giving me this amazing, and I said I'd never marry again, never. But God had a better game plan. You know what? Many times in life, stuff don't make sense. It don't make sense you're here. What are you going to do about it? You're going to keep drifting with the world? Or it's time for you to stand and renew your mind and admit, I need help. I need change in my life. Then repent from that and you watch God. And I'm telling you today, this ministry is stronger than it's ever, ever, ever been before. Our ministry did not take a lick one off. It's stronger than it's ever before. And I give God all the glory and all the honor for it. And if you want to judge me, na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. I love you, ladies. My son will be back, and this awesome, awesome, awesome worship team will be back with you tomorrow. Don't let nothing stop you from coming. Keep packing this gym out. We've given soap, or we're going to give soap to the entire unit this weekend. Somebody right in this area here really needs it, real bad. I don't know what it is, but. <laughs> but guys, hey, living for Jesus is fun. I can't stand being around deadbeat Christians. Oh, yes, hallelujah, bless God. You know, we can go to a ball game and just go berserk, but then sit in church. If I can get excited over a pig skin, you tell me I can't get excited with awesome worship like this, knowing what he's done for me. Pray this with me, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, renew my mind. I admit failure. I need you. In my life, I repent of everything that's came out of my mouth and all of my actions. From this point on, I will compliment this unit by my lifestyle. No longer will I contaminate it. In the name of Jesus, I give you first place in my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Real soft, real quiet, just a second. If you know that you know that you know that you know that you know, don't respond. But you came through that door tonight, eh, not really sure. But you can say now you're sure. If you don't mind, just putting your hand up if that's you. Let me see your hands. No, 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 no. Keep them up just a second. For God be the glory. You know the cool thing about it? You can put them down. The cool thing about it, how awesome heaven, heaven is and what it means to Jesus. He said, if just one comes, all of heaven gives a party. There's a party going on in heaven. And this party is going to continue. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching this awesome program. Remember, it was tape delayed, and yet it's so special just to watch. I know you were touched, and we're touched, because the only way this can happen is through our awesome partners.
that understand where we go, our congregation, the inmates, can't respond financially. But our partners, they do. They send us, even into the least of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And we'll be back with you very soon once again.